All pharmacy personnel are assisting other customers. <laughs> Hi, uh, Steve Rossi here. And I was wondering how many medicines you carry. Yeah, oh, like an overall medical inventory. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to bother you. I uh, wanted to check up with my medical follow-up. Well, they told me to do that, so... Yeah, well, no, I, I'm trying to get a doctor, but... Uh, when I do, I'll, I'll follow up medically. Did you hear that? Uh, you know, while I was on hold, I'm sorry to keep you, but while I was on hold, they were playing um, a beautiful concerto. I couldn't tell if it was Bach or not, but it was so awfully jarbled through the phone, and I was just thinking there. It was just thinking how much time, like whoever it was, Mozart, whoever, I couldn't tell, Tchaikovsky's slaving over these notes, just one by one, and the timing, and the sharps and flats, and just the years they put into writing these beautiful orchestral pieces, and now it's it's coming out like uh, like it's through like a broken kazoo or a tin can, and uh, it's very offensive. Well, a lot of people find different things offensive. Like if you called me a fuckface, I I don't care. You don't have to call me a Mister Rossi. You can say uh, you know fuckface. Your medicine's not ready yet, and I'd laugh. When I gotta listen to uh, Tchaikovsky being played like the piano's missing keys, then I, I, I think I'm owed an apology. All I want is that medical review. Well, you must have an idea of the medicines in the store. What if I need them all? What if the doctor says, you need all the medicines? And he says, well, you need uh, 6,000 medicines. And I said, well, I don't know if the CVS has 6,000. Don't people that are really sick take a lot of medicine? I didn't get much out of this. I'm sorry I wasted my time, but I... Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll consider uh, becoming a customer and getting a CVS card. But I never bring the card. I always just end up typing in a phone number. And then, like, it takes me forever to type in the number. The numbers are all dirty. And then, like, ten years later, I have $2 built up. And then they say, you can't have your $2 because we change policies where anyone that did anything is bad. No, I'm very pleasant. You're unpleasant. All right, I won't. You think I'd ever... Yeah, I won't. You think I'd ever step foot into that piece of shit pharmacy of yours? It's got carpet on the on the floor. What kind of place has carpet? What was it, a, a movie theater converted to a nursing home, converted to a drugstore? You think you're the only one that's responsible enough to handle drugs? They don't even know what they're talking about. I went in the drive-thru, and I asked the girl. The girl said, do you want a flu shot? I'm in a drive-thru. What are you talking about? I said, you want to do it through the window? And I'm in the passenger seat thinking i got to climb over my friend. And she's like, do you want a CVS card? And I'm like, no, 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 my friend's in a hurry. we got to go. I just pinned it on him because I don't want to answer that question. You want a flu shot? Yeah, I just put it in the bag. I'll administer it when I get home. I was thinking about weird fears like the Sandman. I never grew up afraid of the Sandman because I didn't know what it was. I always just thought it was the guy from the song, Bring Me a Dream, you know? Apparently, like, the Sandman sprinkles sand in your eyes. I would imagine in Asia they have, like, smaller eyes, so you'd have to use a lot less sand. But even just to be afraid of something, if you're afraid of Godzilla or of uh, uh, the Boogeyman or whatever, what are the odds he's in your country? Even if you're afraid of him, fear, uh, false evidence feel appearing real. Fear, false evidence appearing real. See, there's only things I, I really believed in, like, it's, I was afraid of aliens or ghosts. I live on the woods. When I was a kid, I would look out into the woods. But not like a boogeyman. What the hell is he going to do? And why is he going to be in my house? Sprinkling sand in your eyes. What does the sand do? What does the sand from the Sandman do? And what does the boogeyman do? Uh, uh, really, uh, the sand, uh, well, really both, I don't know. I know he sprinkles sand in your eyes. Is that to keep him shut forever and blind you? And what does the boogeyman do? Is, is he just a monster that comes out and scares you? And how would you even know? What did you see? I saw a monster. He came out and he started jumping up and down. Was he a boogeyman? Well, I don't know. I don't have an exact description. Superman and Batman and stuff like that, I understand how they became what they are. But how the hell did Peter Pan get any notoriety? How did Robin Hood get any notoriety? I know 
I don't think Robin Hood is real. I know it's based on a concept, but Peter Pan. No, that's not real either. Pinocchio is a weird invention too. Like think about a wooden boy. A guy makes a wooden boy who li- whose nose grows every time he lies. What a weird, obvious thing. I mean, your nose is growing every time you're lying. You you can live like that. I was in a restaurant and I saw a man sit down and order French fries, and then his uh, wife gave him a look and he said. Okay, broccoli. And I thought about the consequences of taking the broccoli and putting it down her shirt. I realized they would be bad. So I just let him eat his broccoli and hate it. It's not that I hate couples and relationships and women so much. I just can't imagine seeing someone every day. And also relying on them so much and and, and loving them so much. I mean, you can't love them with all your heart. If you love someone with all your heart and they die... Well, then there goes your heart. you got to save something for yourself. What do you have left if you love someone with all your being? And if they stopped having sex with you for good, just saying, you know what, I decided that sex is not the thing I want. When do you stop loving them? Love it, you know, it's, it's just conditional as it bothers me. Do you love me? Yeah. Well, guess what? You know that job you loved? I quit that. Really, that scares me, and I'm not sure I want to be with you. But you love me, and that's a decision I made. If you love me, you love my decision. No. No, I hate your decision. And, uh, I love the... No, I don't love you. Goodbye. All right, bye. And then the whole divorce thing. I don't want a giant thing. Just, what do you want? And, bye. How could I see one person forever? One day she's just going to have this puff of gray popcorn hair. You know, not everybody's hot like my mom. I'm going to have this woman, you know, walking at a 45-degree angle with a puff of popcorn on her head. What am I going to say to her? All right, I'm going to the open mic. Are you okay here or what? Well, uh, I'd prefer to get out of the rain. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you marry someone without a home. I thought you said we have a home. No, I said a home is an abstract thing. We have a place to live, but there's no roof on it. It's not a house. We have a home, just as if we lived in a telephone booth, so that would be our home. We need a house. We need a physical, tangible structure. Now leave me alone, I'm going to the open mic. I am paying five dollars to go get on stage. I love you. Do you want to re- renew our anniversary vows? Um, aren't they the same as before? Hmm? Unless you don't mean them anymore, then yeah, we can renew them. You know how I feel about a priest in the house. At Rossi Comic, for more pleasantries.